guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, doing uh, another episode on the Sweetheart Roadster. So we're, uh, we're rolling pretty good now. Got the uh, this top cow section filled and uh, a lot of the damage worked out. Got a couple little spots that I need to address as we get further along. But hey, I'm pretty happy. It's bare metal. It's looking good. It's fairly straight. Uh, let's move on to the next pad. So what we're going to tackle next is making the uh, cow side for this side here. Uh, a lot of times, and pretty much, I should say a lot of times, pretty much most of the Model A's that you find anymore, uh, if they haven't been restored already, uh, or you find a desert car or something that's been stored away, it's going to need the bottom three to six to ten inches, depending on the car you're messing with, and uh, you gotta you got to cut that out and replace it unless you're doing something that you're just leaving as is. But if you're restoring something or you're building something that's going to be painted and nice, you're going to have to deal with replacing this. Now, a lot of the cars you can get away with just doing that bottom six inches, you're fine. They sell the patch panels that are okay. Um, but if you get into where you need to replace this whole entire panel here, it starts to get expensive really quickly. And uh, as I always talk about in, the, in these videos, I try and keep stuff affordable when I'm building these cars. So if I can make it myself and make it uh, to a equal or better quality than something you can buy, and I don't spend three, four hundred dollars on a part, I forget what these cost, but I think they're two, three hundred bucks for a side, um, I'll just make it myself. Plus, I like doing it myself anyways. It means more when I build a car that I made all the parts for pretty much myself. So, the problem with this car is there is all kinds of sins, like everything on this freaking car, whether it's the chassis, the body, everything has old sins. Uh, there is a hole here that looks like somebody has jammed uh, a punch through to punch a hole. And there's a hole here where this was a deluxe, so it had the, uh, the, the lights that came out the side. And somebody was hanging on them or bent it, and they just ran, they just wiped filler over top of where the panels caved in. So there's damage here, there's damage there, there's rust, bottom's rotten, it's all dented up and distorted. Uh, I think I'm just going to make a holding panel. Uh, so what I'm going to do is cut off just below the body line here, so then I don't have to recreate the body line. So we'll cut just below there, wherever I can sal salvage the metal, and we'll run a bead in somewhere down there. So I'm going to make the rest of this panel. So we'll show you how we're going to do that and uh, get another nice fresh part. So I got a pattern laid out on here, uh, and I got that laid out on some 18 gauge steel. Uh, I rough cut it. One thing I did is the door jam area here. There's actually like a joggle bend uh, that goes into the door jam, overlaps, and then it's spot welded to the inner door jam area. So what I did is uh, measured roughly that joggle bend, and, and it's a bunch of a couple little bends that equal up to about an inch. So I added about an inch on this inside edge of my 
pattern and I even cut on the outside of that to give me extra room. So I always try and cut the panel to be larger than we need. Now I couldn't go real large in this because we're going to run into hitting the hinges and the door and stuff so I didn't want to go too big because when I'm fitting the panel as I'm getting it shaped um, it would give me trouble and I'd have to trim it anyways. So what we have to do now is figure out the shape on what's going on on this panel here uh, before we start attacking this with the English wheel or hammering on or anything. You need to look at the original panel if you have one and try and figure out what's going on as far as the shape goes. So uh, this is our piece that we cut here and I cut the top edge to basically uh, to run along that, that body line there. Now we're going to cut a little bit below that but this allows me again to butt the panel up as we're shaping it right underneath of there and get a good read on what the panel needs or how well it fits. Um, so I'll set that aside there. Uh, again, got my radius gauge that I use all the time for like every video practically I'm using this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is check the radius of this panel um, throughout and it looks like I actually guessed pretty good here. Yeah. Well, it's about yeah, it's about a 36. So what I'm doing is just putting this up here, and I kind of put since there's not a lot of light right here, put my finger underneath so I can see if I can see a shadow up here on the 24, which is a slightly steeper. Uh, radius, I can see the, the gap underneath by moving my finger under there. So this way, front to back, there's about a 36 radius on it. Um, so we will need to put some shape in it that way. Now there's definitely some shape this way in the panel. Um, and actually that's probably about a 36 as well. Now it has a little more uh, sh I don't want to say shape, it's actually form. There's a little more of a, how, how it sweeps down in here. That actually is probably more form than it is shape. So it's not necessarily sh um, stretched more here. It may just be that it's kind of pulled around there more as it goes around the corner. So um, this area here doesn't seem to get, I mean, we're just above where I cut all the junk metal out. But down in here, it's still reading as a 36. So I can't imagine that, um, it really does much more right there. So it seems like it's it's got you know 36, 36 here. Um, now the one thing I noticed is over in here, and I know 28, 29s are kind of funny like that too. It actually is a little more flat right in here. So we need to keep that in mind that this area right here. I'll make some notes here. So probably this area right through here is a little flatter. It's like it, it goes from a 36 and it kind of trails off almost to being flat here. Uh, not dead flat, but a little more flat. Um, and check side to side. It's about a 36. So it's about the same front to back throughout the whole panel. Again, up in here it pulls a little, a little tighter, which I think is more just like I said, form, where you just have to kind of manipulate the panel, uh, but top to bottom, it's a little more flat in here, so we just have to be careful when we're stretching this that we maybe last pass, stay away from this area, just so it has just a touch less shape in it than this area. So, mild shape in the panel, we don't need to hammer it with, in the sandbag or anything like that, we can put this on the wheel and slowly wheel it up till we get the, the radius that we want, and we can keep checking it as it goes. So, uh, I'm going to just make a rough uh, approximation here and put that on the panel so that I know at some point to stay away from that a little bit. But we're going to put this in the wheel, wheel it back and forth, uh, get that shape in it, and uh, start test fitting it as we go. And hopefully we'll have a panel that sort of fits here pretty quickly.
right guys, so uh, I saw, I put it through the wheel a whole bunch, I ran it uh, both ways through the wheel, I, uh, you may have noticed I was switching it back and forth, and that's because we were looking for uh, basically the same kind of crown in both directions, so it actually is a fair amount of shape that needed to go into this, even though it didn't seem like it. Um, so when you run it through the wheel, uh, long ways like this, it's putting most of its shape in it side to side as it goes over the lower anvil or the lower wheel. Um, that's giving you, let's say, I'm just throwing a number out, 80% of your shape or 90% of your shape is side to side because you're going over the wheel. Uh, and you're only getting maybe like a, like a 10 or 15, maybe 20% in this, in this direction. So what I was doing as I was turning it the opposite way, running it through the wheel, which is going to give uh, more crown this way and help it in both directions. So what I ended up getting is pretty darn close to 36 throughout the whole panel. Uh, it's really close um, throughout and uh, we can dial in that last little bit when I do a couple of light wash passes over it with almost no pressure on the wheel. It'll bring it up in those couple of spots that aren't where it needs to be uh, when we're a little closer to being finished. So the panel has a little bit of shape to it and now when we set it on the vehicle instead of it hanging off like it was before uh, and I have it a little long here at the bottom uh, because we want to actually fold the edge underneath a little bit so it is a little long um, it's probably even a little wide but we have a flange on the inside as well but you can see the overall shape is coming in um, and it's hanging off in the bottom here what this is that this doesn't mean that it needs more shape on the wheel it just needs form so form is where you're actually not changing the properties of the metal, you're just kind of forming it into position. So all I'm going to do is give it a little twist with my leg here to get it to pull in at the top here and kind of and see on the, on the car it dives in right here. So we need to kind of help that happen with our hands and form can be easily reversed by just uh, pushing it back with your hands if you go a little far. So we got a little bit of a, a dive in there, so just doing that little bit kind of got us close there. And then by twisting it there at the bottom, I'm not hanging off too much. If anything, it's just touching the frame here because there's too much material, and that's what's holding it up. So the panel itself is starting to fit pretty good. Um, and it's just a little bit of tactical wheeling uh, to get it where we want it to be. Um, is what got us kind of there. So now I can start laying out uh, where this is going to actually sit. We can start figuring out a bend line, uh, figure out where the bead needs to be on the bottom, and uh, get all that figured out. The top I have cut pretty close to where it's going to be, uh, so we're not going to trim much off of this panel. Uh, and we're going to weld pretty close to this bead, this body line here. Uh, so we're just going to go just below it just so we can get a weld seam and enough where I can get a hammer and dolly and fix that. But if you stay close to this body line, it's not going to warp up in here very bad. I have a little bit of warpage below it, but if you can get a hammer and dolly in there, you can reverse it pretty easily. So I'm going to keep adjusting this a little more, get it fitting better, make some more measurements, and uh, we'll be getting closer to trimming and fitting it finally, uh, and also cutting the old panel out. So I'll keep working here. All right, so I got the panel fit in place. I uh, kept adjusting it around until I was kind of happy where it's at. Uh, I got it sitting here maybe about an inch below the body line on the car here. Uh, I decided to drop it right about there because um, there's not a lot of damage in here. The metal's pretty good, and it gets me a little bit away from that bead, so I'm not welding right up into the, uh, the valley of the, uh, of the body line. I can hammer this out. I'm going to have to take one brace out of the, uh, the inside of the cow here, there's a cow brace that's riveted in. And I'm gonna have to take that out so I can get in there and hammer and dolly that. Uh, but that's no big deal, that's something we can just grind the rivets out, pull it out, put it back in when I'm done and, and spot weld it in place or, or uh, bolt it in, depending on what I do. Um, so what you can see, I, I tested the cow band here just to kind of get an idea where my weld seam was gonna be. So what I'm aiming for is, um, basically putting my weld seam against or underneath of this, uh, this cow band. And that's just some trickery to uh, hide 
any minor imperfections that might happen from welding the seam. Now I can get in here with a hammer and dolly and, and work it, so I should be able to get it pretty darn good. Uh, but just in case, putting it somewhere next to um, this, there's a little bead in the panel that kind of the uh, cow trim, uh, cow band seats on. So putting it right next to that will kind of hide it a little bit and it just makes my life a little bit easier. Um, again, you can buy this panel. Um, it's not horribly expensive. Uh, so I could have bought it, replaced it, but um, I like building this stuff from scratch because A, the satisfaction of doing it yourself is is, uh, is pretty cool that you know you look at a panel and say I, I made that looks good you know and, and saves a couple bucks too so um, I can save money and put that into the engine build or something else somewhere else on the car and when you start doing this on a car like this where you have to buy every one of these panels you're going to be into it for you know basically what I paid for the body or the car by the time I buy all of that sheet metal from Brookville or a similar company so that's why I'm making this panel I know people are instantly we're going to jump in and, and say, oh, you can buy that panel, but that's not what this channel is about. This isn't bolt-on garage. This is iron trap garage. You build stuff from scratch and uh, try and save some money. So th this is a good example of that. So enough of the rant. I'm going to work on this panel. And what I need to do is scribe on the inside edge here and make some marks along the bottom here because what's happening is it's hitting on the frame and it's pushing the panel off. It's making it bow in the center here just a little bit because it's uh, a bit longer at the bottom, and because of the curve of the panel, it's hitting on the frame, and that's making the panel seem like it doesn't fit as well as it should. But uh, it's something you got to look at, see where our panel's hitting or what's happening. Uh, if I try to make that fit or force it in place, I'm going to damage the panel. And really, all it is is just this bottom corner is hitting. So I'm going to scribe in here, so where we have our, our bend on the inside of the door jam, and I'm going to mark here on the on the uh, top of the frame where we need this to fold underneath. And what we can do is we can fold that, we can fold this edge, and we can run uh, our bead in here eventually, and that will set the bead right where we want it, just above the, uh, the, the frame here. And it should start looking pretty good pretty quickly once I make a couple of those bends. Just gotta take your time here. So I'm gonna get those all made and uh, see what we can get. Okay, so we're on to the second part of this uh, project, probably um, the longest uh, part of the project, uh, just because we've got to make a die uh, for making all the panels on this car uh, for the bead roller. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't really like uh, a lot of the patch panels that are out there. Uh, they just kind of roll a like inch wide bead that's really round and doesn't look uh, exactly how I want. Uh, it doesn't literally look exactly like the original if you hold them up next to each other. So I figured if I'm going to um, make basically all the lower patches for this car, they might as well be all the same. I'm going to make them all myself. So um, I need to make a die that I'm going to use throughout the whole project, uh, making all these lower patch panels, and then I can, um, I can be assured that it, they're all going to match. So. What I'm doing here is I have one of these, if you guys don't have one of these, they're really handy to get if you can find one. I got it at a, like a, an equipment or an estate auction, you'll notice the trend in all my videos. I do a lot of auctions, I think you can find a lot of really good deals. So I got this old set of Starrett radius gauges. Uh, and these are small little radius gauges. I use a larger one when we're doing panels on a car that you may see me use. Uh, but these are small ones, they have real tight radius, uh, radii uh, around them that you can use and you can pick up small uh, curves and panels and beads and things like that by using this. So I found one out of this set. Uh, it's like a 532nd and it has a little curve in here that actually matches the curvature at the front of the bead uh, or the profile of the um, front of this body line here matches it pretty perfectly. So what I did already is I took a measurement from with my calipers here that went from where the radius started out to where it gets flat again. 
and that's my width or the, the, the area that it's rising, that's the distance that it's rising. And then I took a measurement with my calipers from the base here up to where we end up at, and that's the height of my rise. So what I can do then is I get, when I have a, my, my piece chucked up in the lathe, I can basically go over to uh, where the rise stops and I can kind of cut to that depth in there, uh, or the other way around, I can, I can cut in into the piece here and then I can blend that together and that will give me basically this the shape that we're looking for. Then the other part is the rest of this uh, bead here actually kind of flows down and it matches the profile of the door pretty closely or the profile of the rest of the car. It kind of rolls down underneath. So that is about 36 on this, this larger radius gauge I use uh, on here. So we're going to try and match this curvature going down here to that. Now because it's a small bead I can't really use uh, this large piece here. So what I have, um, I actually found one in this, this kit I got, this is like a handmade radius gauge that somebody, uh, whoever owned these before, made and it actually was really close to this bead. All I had to do was just to sand and adjust this area right here a little bit and I basically have the exact shape of this radius right there overall. So I can use this as I go to kind of check myself. So we're going to cut with the lathe to get the depths and everything correct and then we can kind of blend it, blend it in with a sander or sandpaper to get it to roll how we want. Um, I will try and blend it the best I can by hand with the lathe but as I mentioned in other videos I'm kind of a beginner with, uh, with machining so sometimes I will take shortcuts <laughs> like this by uh, sanding something to get a radius a, a uh, compound radius to, uh, to match what I need. But get the measurements down, we're going to throw this piece that I've chucked up in the lathe in and start cutting into it and hopefully we should have a, a die made up uh, relatively quickly. Alright guys, so I got the uh, dial machined up, I've been tinkering with getting the radius right on this, uh, I've been running a bunch of passes through to try and get rid of uh, any marking that might happen in the panel that will cause additional work. Uh, that's a big part of this is when I make these dies, uh, sometimes when you, they look good to the eye but when you go to run a piece through it will put a line somewhere where maybe your radius uh, wasn't uh, rounded or blended quite well and it will cause an issue. So. Uh, on this one piece I had here that we ran a test piece through, uh, I was getting a line uh, somewhere just over in here, right where the radius ended. And that was because when I uh, was machining that, I had kind of an abrupt stop. And it looked okay to the eye, but when I pressed something through, it was putting a line right where that radius stopped. So I kind of blended the radius in uh, using uh, just good old fashioned sandpaper and uh, by hand kind of sanded it down and got it going. I uh, went back over it with a DA to get it nice and smooth and worked it up to about like 800 grit, which gets it nice and smooth. It's not polished, but it's definitely smooth enough for what for steel, what I'm using it for. I should be just fine. Now the top die here that I'm using is a tipping die that I've already made uh, for some other stuff. It works really well. It's just a, uh, a thin little piece here, maybe eighth inch uh, thin with the, the, uh, the corners rounded so that there's no sharp edges. And what I'm doing is I'm putting that, I'm spacing it. I made a couple spacers. I had to play with those to get the radius right for the step. Um, and I got it pretty good in this piece here. Uh, we'll get some photos. And put two little spacers here. And I got this top die just outside far enough so I could drop it down below this die. And what that does is by cranking this down progressively, so we're going to do probably like three passes, um, you're getting it to push this, this mark, the center, or not center, the uh, beginning of the bead here, this line, we're pushing it down further and further each time we do. Uh, so that's why I needed to get these, uh, these spacers made up just right so that it pushes it just outside, but not so much that it's going to make too gen gentle of a radius and it'll look a little funny. So got it just right. I used the washer, 
uh, a thicker washer that I had, and I had a real thin one that I put in the mill, milled out large enough so that it'll fit over the uh, over the uh, shaft on on the bead roller, and I'm pretty happy with this. So should be able to run our panel through. I did a bunch of test pieces here. Pretty happy with it. Just got to take my time and run it through. Now the way I designed this. Um, or thought it up at least, is I, I've already broken an edge on the panel like you saw earlier. So what I'm doing is I'm using that. Uh, I made the die the exact width that I need the, uh, the bead to be or the, or the body line. So when I run this through, as long as I keep my bend line right on the outside, uh, right on the edge of the, the bead roller die, the lower die, that should give me a nice true line that's going to run through and it can be consistent on every single piece here so we can get the same bead every time. Uh, just we're running it, we're using this brake that we're using on the bottom as kind of our guide instead of using a guide on the, on the actual bead roller. Uh, should work pretty well. The only thing that you, by doing this, you can't make your bend too deep. Um, this is just fine here and this is probably like a little over uh, an inch or so this bend line, which is more than enough for what we need. So I'm going to trim down my cowl piece here uh, for the bend line, uh, the bend piece. Just make sure that it'll fit in the bead roller without any issues. Run it through, and hopefully we're, uh, we're going to be moving along and getting this thing trimmed and fit up real soon. So let's get rolling. Okay guys, so I got the, uh, got the bead made in the bottom of this panel, came out pretty good, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, that die that I worked quite a while on worked well and uh, got a nice looking bead here that uh, kind of matches the original. So uh, the way I have this bent up and the way I've been kind of building this body, it's different than some guys do um, Model A's on 32 rails. Uh, a lot of times, I mentioned in earlier videos of this car, a lot of times guys will channel the car, they'll pinch the frame and channel the car just, just a little bit over the frame, maybe an inch or half an inch or whatever, over the edge of the frame. And I wanted to actually make the body flow with the 32 frame, uh, the shape of the frame. So I didn't really pinch mine too much um, other than up at the frame rails, I, I kind of brought it together a little bit uh, to, to match the grill. So what I need to do is I want to make sure, make sure that these cowl and all these panels pretty much sit real nice and flush on the, uh, on the bottom of the frame rail. And what that means is I gotta get this panel fitting so that it matches the curvature of the frame. Uh, the doors, the, all these pieces. Now, right here it's only got a little bit of curvature, but what's happening is, here in the door, uh, I have to kinda, you saw in the shot just a few seconds ago, uh, I had to use little my little plastic clamps here to hold the panel in place to get it to actually um, kind of sit how I want it. So what I need to do, number one, is just do a little bit of shrinking along this bent edge here, where I bent the edge into the door jam um, to get it to kind of curve and want to sit in there. Now we are sitting over top of the original panel, so it's it's fighting us a little bit, but I, I think it should fit just a little bit better. Uh, as I mentioned in uh, some other videos as well, you want your panel to fit as good as you can with as few clamps before you start uh, welding as you can. So we want this panel to almost hold itself on with very little uh, pressure. So up top here, it's fitting pretty darn good. Um, it's just around the bottom here, and it's fitting nice and tight around that around that bent edge there, which is what I want. Um, but down here at the bottom, it's floating off a little bit. Now I think it needs just a little bit of shrinking on this edge to kind of get it to roll under how we want. But then the other thing is, it needs a little bit of shrinking along this bottom edge here to get it to pull in, because I can kind of push it in a little bit, but it's still this edge is kind of wanting to to go out, you know, out away, and we want it to kind of flow back with the frame. So I'm gonna do just a hair, uh, just a tap or two on the shrinker right here, and I'm gonna do just a little bit there, and I might just touch a, a spot up here just a little bit to get it to kind of roll as well. Just real light touches in the shrinker, and we should be able to get this thing to, to really fit nicely and flow with the frame. So do that, and 
We'll uh, check the fitment here in a second. Alright, so I've got this cow panel finally made. It's been like a month I've been working on this stupid thing. Most of it was uh, making the die for the bottom of this, uh, which turned out really nice and really happy with it. Had to make a piece here in the front where it was rotten and uh, weld that in. That added a little bit of uh, extra work, but it welded in nicely. The key is welding this close to the body line and these beads that are already in the panel and around in this corner. What that did is uh, it adds strength in these areas so that when you weld it, it doesn't warp as bad. So, especially helpful when you're working on something like this where you might not be able to get in the hammer and dolly it real well. Uh, the panel has very little distortion, and honestly, uh, I could probably sand this down and skim coat a filler and it would be good to go. But I'll work it a little bit better, get it uh, pretty nice to match the top of the cow, and uh, we can move on. So, door panels next, and uh, we'll keep working around the car. So. Thanks guys for watching. I'm sorry it's taken so long with the Sweetheart Roadster videos, but I am making progress. So that's all I got guys. Thanks. Catch you later.